Before we talk about these diseases specifically, uh, the autoimmune diseases, and this can go for any disease um, that, that we'll talk about, there's going to come up sensitivity and specificity terms. And what do these terms mean? Now when I was first taught this, this was so confusing to me, and so I'm glad that I've been able to make this video and think through it and better hopefully explain it. So every drug test, you know, every test that you order to rule in or rule out a diagnosis um, has a specific sensitivity and a number of, has a number of sensitivity and a number of specificity. So let's say you have, let's do an example here, you have a patient with colon cancer. You suspect, you suspect the patient has colon cancer. So you want to run some tests. It could be a blood work, it could be a serological test, it could be, uh, you know, any kind of test. There's going to be a sensitivity and a specificity number attached to that test. So let's first just talk about what this is and then we'll talk about the example more specifically. So every test can be either positive or negative. You know, let's run, you know, if you want to run Bob's test, Bob's test, it's going to come back, well, Bob's test is either positive or negative. What well, does that mean? positive or negative sensitivity or positive negative specificity? That's what you have to ask. So if Bob's test comes back, so sensitive, let's just think about sensitivity this way. Let's think about it as, you know, if, if someone says, oh, you're highly sensitive or, you know, people that are sensitive, what does that mean? It just means that if a person is sensitive, what does that mean? You know, every little thing, everything um, hurts them or, you know, hurts their feelings. Hurts feelings. Everything, every little thing hurts their feelings, okay? That's, you know, in, in, in you know, in normal talk, a sensitive person is someone that, you know, they get overly hurt about every little thing and someone could smirk at them wrong or not say hi to them and then they think that oh that person hates me you know so just think of it that a person that is sensitive how do they react so if the if the test comes back positive for sensitivity then it means that everything on the planet you know or everything in a certain genre uh, uh, is going to hurt that is going to hurt that person well everything that comes back positive on this test they could have either and there's certain defined rules but if the test comes back positive they could have colon cancer let's do this they could have colon cancer let's say this test is sensitive for cancers so you'd have a colon cancer, you could have prostate cancer, you could have uh, breast cancer, you could have all these different types of cancers. And so if, if the test comes back positive and it's highly sensitive, well then you know that you could either have colon cancer or you could have prostate cancer or you could have breast cancer. It's very sensitive. It's going to pick up everything that resembles any kind of cancer. Well, if it's a negative, well, then you know you don't have colon cancer. You don't have prostate cancer. You don't have breast cancer. It's, very, it's a very good test. And there's a mnemonic here called SNOUT. SNOUT. So sensitivity, if it's, if it's negative, helps you rule out a condition. Rule out condition. So, and we're talking about high sensitivity in this case. High sensitivity. So, if this example, let's say in this example you have a patient that you suspect has colon cancer. 
and there's a test, let's say Bob's test, that is highly sensitive, meaning that it will pick up a lot, it might not pick up only colon cancer, but it will pick up, you know, prostate cancer, breast cancer, any other kind of cancer. So Bob's test is a very sensitive test. So you want to run this test. Well, if it comes back positive, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have colon cancer. It could mean that you have prostate cancer, or it could mean that you have breast cancer, or it could mean that you have, uh, you know, any a melanoma of some kind, or you know, some skin cancer. It can mean that you have skin cancer. It doesn't necessarily mean anything. So a positive, a high sensitive positive test doesn't really tell you much information. But if it's negative, well then that tells you information. This is very informative if high uh, sensitivity. So let's say the sensitivity is like 99 or uh, 95, like if it's if it's greater than 90, you know, that's a pretty good test. So if it's a negative, then it's going to help you rule out the condition or snout. So if the test comes back and it's negative and you're like, okay, so he doesn't have colon cancer, he doesn't have prostate cancer, he doesn't have breast cancer, he doesn't have skin cancer, he's good. So there's very little air here. Little air. Okay? So Let's talk about specificity now. Again, we're going to use the example that it's a high specificity, greater than 90, for example. Now, I'm just making up this, but greater than 90 is definitely going to be high. I don't know if there's exact cutoff points, but ni greater than 90, greater than 90 is going to be high on anything. So, if there's a test that has high specificity for colon cancer, you know, let's call it Joe's test. Joe's test. Joe's test, and then they say in the literature, Joe's test has a high specificity. Well, let's then, you know, high specificity for colon cancer, and I suspect that my patient has colon cancer, why well, I want to run Joe's test. So what does Joe test do? Well, there's a positive and a negative. If it comes back positive, then that rules in rules in uh, condition if it's positive. So a positive test helps confirm the diagnosis. So if uh, a test is highly spe specific, it's specific for a disease. It's highly it's highly specific. It's going to tell you if it's a positive it's going to tell you that yes you are very likely having to have that condition so if it's positive it's gonna say oh you're gonna have colon cancer and you're gonna have to tell the patient I'm sorry but you have colon cancer here's your options if it's a negative well then that doesn't tell you any information no info it doesn't it doesn't tell you um, that he doesn't, it, it tells you, it, th there's really no information. It's not saying that you do have it or that you don't have it. It's just, well, that was a good test and he yeah, has to pay money for, for that test. But it doesn't tell you anything. So these are high specificity, low, low, high sensitivity and high specificity examples. And let's let's do another example because I, I think it takes some examples to kind of get used to this so let's say here you're at the airport airport and everybody's standing in line everybody's standing in line they have to take off their shoes take off their belts you know you know how airport security is nowadays so let's say you walk through this metal detector this is a metal detector and let's say this metal detector has high 
sensitivity. What does that mean? High sensitivity means that this metal detector is, let's say it has high sensitivity for metal, obviously, because it's a metal detector. So it is going to detect every, every little thing that has to do with metal. It's going to detect every little thing that has to do with metal. But let's say you walk through a different metal detector. And it is high specificity. And let's say it's high specificity for guns. It doesn't really care about paper clips. It doesn't care about nails. It doesn't really care about screwdrivers. It just is really highly specific or highly specific for guns. It's really it's really good at uh, the technology is really good at tech detecting guns to see if there's a gun on you. And you walk through and it goes off. So there's a positive. It goes beep 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 beep. So what does that mean? It means you're you're there the TSA, the people in the airport, they're going to be highly suspicious of you having a gun because this metal detector is supposedly marketed and engineered to be highly specific for guns. What if it's a negative test? Well, it more than likely will say that you know, you probably don't have a gun, but there's no but it's not 100%. There's no 100% guarantee that you don't have a gun. All right. And let's say this one. Let's say you walk through and the metal detector and there's a positive. It goes beep 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 beep. Well, that tells you that there might be metal on you. There's metal on you, but you're not sure. You're not sure what metal what metal there is. And then let's say it's negative. Let's say you walk through this metal detector that's highly sensitive. It will detect any metal that you have on you, any screwdrivers, paper clips, any earrings, any coins in your pockets, anything. Well, if it's negative, then bingo, you are more than likely a very, very strong result you don't have you don't have any metal and so these terms these terms that help you there's snout and spin so snout is sensitivity very low has to be has to be a negative result so a test that has high sensitivity if it's negative, it helps you rule out the condition. Rules out condition. Spin refers to this this positive up here. I'll just put it up here. Spin. Spin refers to specificity. And it has to be a positive result. That helps you rule in a condition. So that helps you rule in a condition. So hope you understand a little bit more about sensitivity and specificity. And there's false positive and false negatives and how you calculate all that. I'm not going to go into that. I just want you to get a, a general idea of what sensitivity and specificity is. And it's easy to think about high sensitivity and high specificity. If you think about low sensitivity or low specificity or medium sensitivity or medium, uh, uh, medium specificity and sensitivity, there's not as much information. But in patient care, if you're worried about a patient having, you know, a condition, condition X, Y, or Z, you want to know when you run Bob's test what the numbers are. You want to know if it's specific, if it's sensitive, 
uh, of course you want to run the most specific and the most sensitive tests for your patients so that will it will kind of as we talk about the these uh, conditions especially when we start uh, autoimmune conditions they'll say this test is highly specific or this test is medium specific so it, it, that's kind of just gives you a ballpark of what's going on see you in the next video